Ranga on the move. We're at a place today called Nan Lian Gardens. Um, kind of just a little bit out the main area of Hong Kong, going north. And um, I've just got here, but it's obviously a massive garden, but they have a room which shows you how all the wooden buildings all around China are created. So it shows you all the different ways that they connect the beams. And then all the different uh, mini versions of the, like the monasteries and things around mainland China and, and here. So this one's the main hall, Foguang Monastery in Shanxi, I guess that would be pronounced, China. Super cool. This one's the... This one's in Hong Kong. Their construction, 1997. When was this one? Wow, this one was in the Tang Dynasty. 857 AD. And obviously each one gives you all the... The... Um, uh, information of how they're built and here it shows you the type of beams that they use so 34 for example would be these a Thai beam which would be do they have that there? no they don't have that there. So cool though. I say it every time I come to Asia that their um, architecture is the best. They have a nunnery over the road from here as well, where we're going to go afterwards. So if you're not into historical stuff, uh, probably don't watch this video, I guess. Pagoda. It's built in the Liao Dynasty, 1056. Imagine seeing that one in real life. What does it say? The pagoda is octagonal in shape with three Jian divisions. About five meters. I don't know what that means. I guess it means the, the sections. Yeah, it would be. One, two, three, four. Yeah, it would be. Uh, what else does it say? It appears, to, it appears to be five stories high, but has in fact nine floors. It's pretty cool because four of those floors do not open to the outside and they're not visible unless you're inside it basically that's cool huh they use 54 different types of brackets to construct it and inside is a 10 meter tall statue of buddha that's cool the song dynasty style eight sets Man, if you were a carpenter, this would be like a bloody wet dream, wouldn't it? I'm not a carpenter, but it's still, still amazing. This, yeah, like, honestly, ancient Chinese architecture, or even like Nepalese, stuff like that, it, um, for me, it blows European architecture out of the water. Like, arch the architecture in Europe is cool, but you can't beat these style roofs and how everything is made from wood rather than stone. This one is 984 AD. It's pretty cool, let's get out of the way. 
This one looks amazing. That one's. Oh, this one's in Beijing. This one's massive. 1420, the Ming Dynasty. Once I've filmed a little bit of this, I'm going to come back and read all of these properly. You alright? I think that's it for the wooden, um, the wooden mini buildings, I guess you would call them. They have like these trees here, and they're almost like, they look like bonsai trees, but they're big. I don't know if that's correct, but that's what they look like to, to us. <laughs> I thought they'd have a little sign saying what trees they are, but they don't. Oh, there's a lotus terrace this way, apparently. Yeah, this is literally right in the middle of the city, like... You can see all the skyscrapers around here. <clears throat> I think they have one similar to these in Bangkok as well, called the Green Lung or something, isn't it? I don't know, actually. No, I've not been there, but I've heard of it. I'm pretty sure it's called the Green Lung. Ooh, look at this. And the um, lions here, foo dogs. Amazing. What do you want, my phone? Nice, nice place to reside if you're a duck. I think you can make a nice home here. So those foo dogs, by the way, um, they're not dogs, they're lions, and the reason that they're called food, they're only called food dogs in western countries because back in the day, uh, like people didn't know that they were lions and they just thought they kind of looked like a dog. And foo means I think it meant peaceful or something like that. Someone was telling me the other day, yeah, I'm pretty sure foo means peaceful, or was it Buddha? I can't remember, I'm gonna to have to look it up. I'll put I'll drop it on the screen here. Um, so basically they the like foreigners thought it was like peaceful dog or Buddha dog or whichever one of the two. But they're actually lions, so when someone says it's a foo dog, completely incorrect. I don't know the actual name of them in Chinese though, sorry I forgot. I did know it. I'm actually having a massive foo dog back piece done at the moment. It should be done by the end of this year. Um, so I probably should find out what they're actually called. <laughs> Typical foreigner just calling it a food dog. <clears throat> Incorrect. Oh, they do have bonsais here. I have my mate Adam's going to watch this video, maybe. He would love this. He's like super into bonsai trees, I think. There's a load of them in the UK. Pretty cool hobby, isn't it? It's like trimming tiny trees. This one's cool. I still think these are massive though, compared to like a normal bonsai, aren't they? They're like tiny, tiny. Yeah, maybe these aren't bonsais, but what's this place? The rockery, is this called? Yeah, the <laughs> it's just a room full of rocks. Rocks don't um, don't do it for me, so no point looking in there. Man, we were so tired after Disney yesterday. I'm so glad we left earlier than we were going to. Um, we went out for some local Cantonese dinner, like goose and stuff like that, and wasn't the most successful. And um, man, we just crashed after that. We went and had a beer. Oh, there's a store, but there's no photography, so can't film in here. Catch you in a minute.
Oh, this is nice. Yeah, there's a restaurant in there. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, I don't know if you probably can't see it, but that's a window to a restaurant there. Going to get a drink. Yeah, I get some water. <laughs> yeah. Do you want something else? I don't know, we could have sat and had a drink. Yeah, yeah. we can sit down in there. Looks cool. We, we do have a bunch more stuff we want to see here. That, well, there's massive koi fish in there. It's like yeah. huge, it's just gone behind that rock. There's one over there as well. There's a huge one just gone behind that rock. I'd love to just live somewhere where, you know, you could come here and like in Brisbane, we have our botanic gardens, but they suck. <laughs> This is way better than our botanic gardens. Yeah. <laughs> some, some botanic gardens in Australia are really nice, but... Uh, our botanic gardens are good because we've got loads of wildlife. Yeah, I suppose. That's the thing that other countries lack is the wildlife. Yeah, 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 yeah. But this has all the cool, like, you know... Yeah. Has that nice, relaxed feeling, architecture and cool, Zen cool things. <laughs> yeah, all the nice little Chinese music as you're walking around. Hopefully this is a set menu too. Man, I want to go to mainland China so bad. Hello. YouTuber? Uh, a little bit. <laughs> Might be able to get tea. Tea, yeah. I don't know, we'll find out. Ah, oh, again, no photography. All right, I got to turn it off. They're really strict with it here as well, so. Okay, so, it's one thing we found here in Hong Kong, a lot of it's like set menus at like the posher places. So if you don't want a set menu, which we don't right now, we just want a drink, you're not allowed in. So you have to spend a certain amount. So we've just found a tea house. Oh man, again, no photography. I really want to show you this. All the, uh, I don't know if you can see that. Let me see if I can film in, zoom in. All the um, fish. koi fish. It's <sighs> so annoying that you can't film here. It looks incredible. I think it's like real traditional. Lauren just said you have to take off your shoes. Uh, all right, I'm gonna have to shut this off. I'll see if I can film when we're in here. Videos are not allowed in here, but as we were the only ones, the lady allowed us to take a few photos that you can see here. Tea houses in China can date back as far as the 600s and are an important part of Chinese culture. They were originally used for relaxing and business talks. And when they were first introduced, there used to be many performers that would entertain the guests, such as jugglers, poets, actors, and opera singers. This particular tea house has a minimum fee of one tea per customer, so it's a lot more cost effective to order a pot of tea between you. The prices vary anywhere from 60 Australian dollars to 1000 Australian dollars for a single pot of tea. Also available on the menu are savoury goods like dim sums and a variety of cookies, which include flavours like pistachio, macadamia, matcha, tea flavour and tomato. I tried convincing her to let me film in there, but she wasn't having it, even though we were the only customers. So it's, it's expensive. It was uh, 300 Hong Kong dollars, which is like uh, 60 bucks, something like that for tea, but it's like a minimum fee. Uh, but amazing experience. If you, if you like, like traditional Chinese tea, we had it a lot when we were in Taiwan. This is like a proper way that they do it, the way they pour it, they tell you how to do it properly and everything. Um, yeah, incredible. When it rains here as well, like really heavy, comes down the gutters and these fill up and it makes like a like a waterfall. She, uh, yeah, wouldn't budge on the rules, unfortunately. So, sorry, I tried. I know it says that there, but uh, I don't think they're that strict, it's just not inside. This is the place though, Song Cha Shi 
tea house. Yeah, just type in that or the gardens that I was on about earlier. I can't remember what it's called now. Um, we're going to go over to, over the road there's the nunnery. So we're going to go over there, they have a museum. We're kind of getting a little bit limited on time. We have to go pick up Lauren's watch from a watch repairer. We took it there yesterday um, and he told us he closed at 6.30 and he's just texted me saying he closed at 1.30 and it's now 1. We're not going to get there in time. So I said, no, we'll be there at like 2.33. And he said, okay, he'll wait. So yeah, that's kind of what we're going to do. So we can't spend too much time here. But I say like five five tube stops from our hostel so we could always come here tomorrow before our flight as well if we if we want to yeah let's go check out this nunnery then shall we yeah before we go yeah yeah very cool you're telling me about now this is like another thing though that when it rains it comes down here these fill up and they overflow oh here we go now you can see it here Like uh, like little buckets. Cool, aren't they? Is it a nunnery or a monastery? I think it's a nunnery, nunnery. isn't it? Yeah, okay. Uh, nunnery. Okay, right. We're going to cross over here and then we'll see in a sec. Lotus Pond Garden. Kind of like a refuge right in the middle of the city. It's nice to get out of the concrete jungle into here. Look at those dragon heads. So beautiful. Another pond. Another pond. And there's like the shrine at the top there by the looks of it. We'll go and check that out. These dragon heads where the water are coming from are amazing. Chi Lin Nunnery Buddhist Halls. If there is a something after life, like a, you get another another life, I'm going to come back as a Buddhist. Ah, oh, okay. Not allowed to film this bit. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Not allowed to film this bit. You get the idea. It's very nice. Toodle pip. This was probably one of our favourite things we actually did in the whole of Hong Kong over the five days that we were there. Super relaxing, just gets you out the hustle and bustle of the main city. It's free to enter as well. Uh, there is a shop in the nunnery uh, which sell, you know, souvenirs and, and jade if you're into stones and things like that. But we were here in August, which is extremely hot and there was one, maybe even two actually, Western tourists which collapsed and had to get taken away in an ambulance from inside here. So please, if you're here coming in August, make sure you bring plenty of water. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it. See ya.